Hello, Tallahassee. This is the Gospel on the Radio talk show. I'm Pastor Jack King. I'm your host, and I'm excited to be with you here on Sunday mornings here on WTSM 97.9. We're on Sunday mornings from 7 to 8. We talk about dreams and visions and a church triumphant, alive and well. We talk about the church and what God is doing in his blessed, glorious kingdom. And uh, such a privilege to be able to share the gospel in such a way. We're telling the story of the church. And I tell people this all the time. I said, if we don't tell it, who's going to tell it? And so God has given this opportunity, and I appreciate it very, very much. And I appreciate you tuning in. Remember, we have a few rules on the show. We don't talk sports, politics, or doctrine, but we do always Speak well of one another. This is show number 952 today. And uh, people ask me a lot of times, they say, well, how do you get gassed for the show? And I say, well, the Lord just sends them. And uh, I've been doing this almost 20 years now. And it really is amazing how God has just brought people across my path uh, you say, well, people call you and, and want to be on the show? A few, uh, occasionally that does happen, but most of the time, God just puts it together. But a, a young lady that I had on the show about a year ago, the name is Wendy Strickland, and um, she is with the Good Samaritan Network, which is uh, a part of Glenn Burns and Glenn and Beth Burns organization that they formed. And uh, she came and she just did a wonderful job on the interview and just gave us a lot of information about human tra- trafficking and uh, domestic violence. And uh, so we had her scheduled to be back on the show last week, but she called me. Actually, she sent me a text and she said that she completely lost her voice dealing with some bronchitis and different things. So rescheduled her for this week. Because she has an event coming up here real soon, and we wanted to be able to get that information out to you. Well, the night that she was supposed to be here, she sent me a text. She said, I'm in the emergency room, and I've completely lost my voice again. And I said, well, I tell you what, I think this is what we can do, because this information is very important. I'm going to give you the information, and then I'm going to re-air the interview that she did with us a year ago because it was very good. And you'll enjoy it because there's a lot of information in this uh, interview, things that I didn't know, and there'll be things that you didn't know. So if you didn't hear it a year ago, or maybe you did, you can uh, kind of get a review of it. So anyway, here's the event. It's a 5K and one-mile victory run. It's going to take place January the 25th at Tom Brown Park. Uh, registration starts at 7 o'clock, or that's a.m., and then uh, the race will start from 8 to 1, and then after the race, there's family fun, games, vendors, unique ideas, merchandise, and speakers about human trafficking and domestic violence. All that's going to be taking place, and I'm looking at this uh, run that's going to take place from 8 to 1, Now, something tells me that there's more than one race going. I don't know. (laughs) All I know, I I just believe it'll be a lot of fun, and it'll be a very good cause to raise money for um, Angel Wings. That's the name of her ministry is Angel Wings. And so you're going to want to find out all about that, and we're going to give you this information as we go to the interview with Miss Wendy Strickland from Angel Wings. Today on the broadcast, I have Wendy Strickland. She is the executive director and founder of Angel Wings Family Crisis Intervention Center, Inc. (laughs) Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to have you here today. And and, uh, I'm excited to hear about your ministry and what God is doing. First of all, how long have you been doing this now? We've been doing this about three years. So it's fairly new and getting getting started here. Mm -hmm. Tell our audience what it is that you do. I work with the victims and the survivors of domestic violence and human trafficking. Wow. Wow. <laughs> We're hearing a lot about that on the news yes. these days. Yes. Uh, Pam Bondi, she really 
kind of brought that to the forefront here in the state of Florida. Mm-hmm. And uh, it really, to me, it's really been an eye opener yeah. just to hear her talk about the different things that's happening in the state, in, in our state. Absolutely. Now, we know it's not just here, but mm-hmm. uh, it turned out that Florida was a very uh, heavily involved in human tra- trafficking, that type of thing. We are in the United States. We're number three. Is that right? Wow. Florida is the third highest state. Yes. Have we, since she brought this to the forefront, have we made a dent in it? We've made dents, but we still have a very long way to go. Problem is still very much there. Yes. Okay. All right. What do you do in particular? How do you go about your ministry? So what I do is I go to different venues and I talk about um, the perils of domestic violence as well as human trafficking. Okay. Um, right now, human trafficking is trending in the news. So therefore, people are, are, are hearing about it, but they're still not aware of what it looks like. Uh-huh. Um, most of the time, people thought um, or think human trafficking is prostitution. Uh-huh. And it's not. There's no such thing as a child prostitute. A child cannot prostitute themselves, neither can they take themselves across county lines. Um, twelve, The age of 12 is usually where it starts. Oh, my goodness. Um, but they have found, and if you're looking at, looking at the news lately, they are finding people that are looking for children um, as early as nine months old. Oh, my. To traffic. Yeah. How, how does that happen? Because people's minds are in dark places. Uh-huh. Okay, but a, a nine-year, a nine-month-old child—that's kidnapping, isn't it? That's kidnapping. That's sodomy. That's molestation. Right. That's rape. That's a lot of things. But now, what would happen to, for that time? Would a, a parent sell a child or something? How, how does this happen? That's very lucrative. That's a lucrative business. Is that right? They sell their children. A lot of times, people do it because they're on drugs. Uh huh. They're um heavily medicated or they have mental health issues and so a lot of times it happens they do it because it happened to them as children oh my goodness and so they just continue the trend right so basically we we just have that same thing repeating itself over and over over again Mm -hmm. so i have read a little bit about this i kind of have some pictures in my mind of how it happens even uh i've read about it in other countries where this is happening also in pretty prevalent to where somebody would come into a village mm-hmm. and begin to uh, uh, give people stuff and, and find somebody who's who has a real deep need mm-hmm. and begin to uh, uh, give the parents money and things like this and draw them into their confidence mm-hmm. to f- eventually the parent would actually sell their children mm-hmm. to where then they would take them to a big city someplace and then they're virtually their prisoners. A lot of times, the parents don't particularly sell their children. Uh They find parents that are vulnerable most of the time. And what happens is they promise them that they can give their children a better life. Right. And parents are always eager, if it's another country or um, another faraway place, to get their children to a place of safety so that they are promised education, they are promised good jobs, they are promised to um, grow up in a good family, people that will love them and care for them. Right. And many times, and sometimes their children are even in or- orphanages. So when you tell a parent that is really having a hard time, I can make it a better time for them, I can make it easier, I can get them educated, then of course they're willing to give their children to somebody and they only find out later a lot of times that they've been sold into human trafficking. And here we're hearing about it happening here in the state of Florida. Yes. Which most people who go about their normal life just cannot imagine this could be happening almost in before their very eyes, but they're just not even aware of it. Human trafficking is hidden in uh-huh. plain sight. So you can walk into a mall and you'll see kids standing outside the mall and you're just laughing and you go in, you don't pay that any attention. That could very well be human trafficking. Now, when you say standing outside the mall, mm-hmm. are, are they panhandling or anything or just, just there? Just standing there. And what would, the, what would the purpose of that be? The purpose of that is somebody has made a phone call uh-huh. and that child is waiting for that person to come to the mall, pull up in front of the car, in front of the mall and call the child to the car. Or call the adult to the car. And they take them off. 
in the whatever it's a human trafficking is any type of coercion manipulation or abuse or you promise sales and goods to somebody that they never get the money or whatever you promise them wow they are now in a life of human trafficking my goodness and okay so the child is standing out there in the mall mm -hmm. you don't see anybody around mm -mm. what is to prevent that child from from fleeing because that child has been groomed Every person that goes into human trafficking, there is a grooming period. It's anywhere from six to eight weeks, wherein they treat them really nice. Um, they find out what they like. They find out um, what they're interested in. They find out um, where they like to go. They find out all the information, who their friends are, who their family is. They even find out, manipulate them enough to find out about the banking accounts. Uh -huh. um, any pertinent information. Six to eight weeks later, now they're telling them, I'm your family. I can be your family. Does your parent treat you like a baby? Sure. They, do they oh, let you yeah, go out yeah. by yourself? Sure. Yeah. Well, I can treat you like a real woman or I can treat you like a young man. I can give you things. And they start buying them things. A lot of times parents see new things, but because they work so hard, they don't realize that somebody is actually giving this to them or a kid will just say, I got it from my friend. Wow. So this is the whole process of bringing them in and, uh, Cause them to be under their control. Yes, it's a grueling process. Right. And, and and this could happen to a child that's in maybe even a fairly good home. Yes. And uh, the parent being totally unaware that it's happening and until all of a sudden maybe the child just disappears? Yes. I actually had a judge from another state that his grandchild ended up here in Tallahassee. Oh, my. Um, she had given them, uh, the traffickers, all of the information. They got to be good friends with her, and she thought she thought that she was in love with him. And right. and, and young people just don't know. Yeah. They don't get it. Yeah. They don't get it. And so once he found out that her grandfather was a judge, well, that was that was par for the course. He ended up here. She ended up here in the hospital in Tallahassee, and it was one thing after the next. So um, – one of the things she said, I wish I hadn't have told the information. I wish I had not um, said a whole lot to them. I'm, it's my fault, you know. Um, and you, when, when a child is starving for attention or right, affection, right, right. they will get it where they can, right. whether um, good, bad, or indifferent. They don't realize that. And so um, if you're starving for affection and somebody takes you to the mall and buy you a pair of Air Jordans or they're buying you DVDs and the latest music or the latest outfits, then you think this person really, really does love you. Uh -huh. And right. so they do it in the name of love. So it's, it really is a, a mental, emotional manipulation to the point to where they can eventually cause this person to be under their control. First by kindness yes. and then later cruelty. Yes. First, mm -hmm. it starts off very kind. Right. Nobody ever walks up to a person with loser written across their face. Right. If that was done, it would be part for the course. You would automatically know that this is a monster. Wow. But of course, they first, they're very manipulative, very nice to them. Right. Take them out to nice dinners when they're used to getting maybe hot dogs at home or um, parents no longer sit down at the dinner table like we used to do when we were growing up. So that component is off the table. Um, get something, throw it in the microwave, and that's it. Right. And so they don't get that camaraderie or that feeling of family. Um, and so they're feeling like they're, they're, they're out there all alone. They got friends, but they're not close friends. And so that um, trafficker comes in to constantly manipulate and draw. Right. And they find out what that child's drawing tool wow. is. Wow. And these people are, are so trained in what they do. Yes. I mean, they, they know how to do it. They know how to manipulate the young mind mm -hmm. to bring them under their own spell, their own captivity. Now, you're, you're involved in this, and you say three years you've been doing angel wings. Yes. What brought you into this? What caused you to want to be involved in this? In 1986, my aunt, Constance Howard, was murdered. Her husband um, killed her in a domestic violence situation that had gone on years and years and years. He also trafficked her, meaning he sold her to his friends for money. She never saw the money. 
as in human trafficking today, the kids or the adults that are in human trafficking, they never get a dime. Huh. The money wow. is always given to the trafficker. Uh -huh. And so um, that's where the exchange of goods or services, um, sometimes they work for drugs. And so, but my aunt worked for money. Like I said, she never got it, but right. he got, he, the uncle got all of the money. And so in over time, it, it just got worse and worse. The beatings got worse. Um, he used to tie her to a car and drag her down the street. Oh my goodness. It was a way of manipulating. Right. Um, and saying, if you don't do what I want you to do, I'll kill your parents. And she, she had older parents. Wow. That had just so, bought their own so home. A, a so power of thing. Course. A power and control through power. But now you said that this was her husband. Mm -hmm. So she actually married him. Yes. And, uh, uh, I mean, because the, I mean, that's kind of unusual, isn't it? I mean, generally when people are in these type of situations, they don't always marry, do they? Not always, but it, it can be done. There are three components to to any type of um, trauma uh -huh. uh, as far as domestic violence and human trafficking or rape. There are three components that are always present. Power, control, and fear. Uh -huh. That's okay. how the person manipulates and so a lot of times they get caught up with a Stockholm Syndrome, wherein they fall in love with their assailant because they're doing things. Now, here's the thing. They don't always just beat them, beat them, beat them. You know, um, they, they provide food at times. Sometimes they provide water or they'll say, well, I'll give you the night off. You can rest. And they become human to them. That's wow. how they continue to keep that exchange. Wow. But when it's bad, it's bad. When it's time to get up, it doesn't matter if the girl is sick. She could have, um, or the boy, they could have gotten some type of STD. They could have um, gotten something else or a cold or a flu. But if that person says, you need to make X amount of dollars, we're expecting that X amount of dollars to come in. And if they, if they don't make that money, that's when they get beat. Is that right? Wow. And, it, and it's so much. It's a, the control of the mind. So really a person just loses themselves, don't they? I they mean, lose themselves. They're so connected to this individual that's abusing them. It, it's just hard to imagine how this happens. But mm -hmm. yet we know how vulnerable young people are. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I've worked with young people most of my ministry. Yeah. And I know <laughs> the, the things that they buy into uh, is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. And then you find this, and of course you, we do have the crisis of, as you've described, a breakdown of the family mm -hmm. to where the family units are not really together. They're not communicating together. Uh, there's a lot of things that's, that's taking the, the parents out of the home. A lot of times it's financial needs. You've got both a mom and dad. If there is a mom, a mom and a dad, mm -hmm. they're working. They're working long hours to make ends meet. Children are unattended. All of those things and sets us up to be vulnerable to these type of situations that we're dealing with in our country. But again, it's awfully hard to imagine it's happening right in front of your eyes and you're not even aware of it. The bad thing that it's happening in Tallahassee, uh -huh. we're okay. the state capital. Most people don't even realize, is this really real? I thought this was happening in Bangladesh. I thought right. this was happening in China. I thought this was happening somewhere else but here okay. but not only is it in the US it is in Florida it is in Georgia uh, I can't even tell you how the reason Florida is so pivotal is because when they come up through South Florida, Miami the Keys, all of that they come up down this side part of Florida uh -huh. that's where the, the traffic is heaviest okay. um, Tampa is very heavy um, Jacksonville is very heavy. West Palm Beach is laden with human is trafficking. That right? Yes. Wow. Um, Orlando is big. More of the tourist areas are really big. And Florida, Tallahassee, this North Florida corridor is very high because we're the entryway or the portal way into Georgia, Alabama, and on up. And so they disperse here. Wow. Our shelter is pivotal as well because people come in and they come through there. They stay a couple of days. They keep traveling. But while they're here, uh -huh. a lot of times they pick up okay. um, people.
people to put in human trafficking. And when you say shelter, you talk yes. about a shelter that you're involved in with a Good Samaritan network? Um, no. No, okay. Mm-mm. But this is a shelter that you're involved in. Are you talking about the city shelter? Okay, all right. The, the Carney Center. Yes. Okay. So, so that is being manipulated even though the authorities don't want it to be that way. It is. Right, right. Okay. Wow. So again, most of the time we're just totally unaware of what's mm-hmm. happening. So I uh, would imagine that you are in contact with the, like the uh, state's attorney's office, this type of thing in, in your ministry. So you're getting a lot of these statistics, uh, information that you're sharing with us today, things that, that you're aware of. Um, are there meetings that they're asking you all to come to who are involved in this? Um, the information that we glean from a lot of times is actually from Polaris. Okay. Um, the Big Ben Homeless Co- Coalition provides information okay. on their website. Um, at some of their meetings, they're awesome. Stack, the Survive and Thrive Advocacy Center, is very good. Refuge House is good. They okay. all have information that's disseminated um, in Tallahassee and in Leon, Leon County to provide information um, based on the numbers that they're seeing. Okay. The um, numbers that are coming through... Um, Homeland Security, those those numbers are projected and sent out so that wow. it's based on the number of calls that are being made, right, right. that are being routed wow. back that way, so that um, the numbers are won't be skewed. And based on here, here's amazing. here's another problem. It depends on the numbers are probably higher, but the problem is they're not being reported. Wow. So really, we don't fully have the numbers. No. Yeah. And, and, and I would imagine that with the influx of illegals coming across the border, that's got to be complicating the situation because that's, that's probably a lot of reasons why a lot of these people are being brought to America. Yes. And then you think about, okay, who are the people who are benefiting from these type of things? And, and that, that just kind of boils your, <laughs> I mean, that just yes. causes you to get upset all over again. Because yes. you realize that there are people who are, who are involved in this, and they're the ones that are paying the money because it wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for that. It just makes you just mad <laughs> because yes. you realize what you're dealing with. And, of course, uh, people like you, you've got a heart and passion to try to combat this type of things. And, of course, you've already mentioned the fact that part of what you do, you're going into different places and you're just informing people. Yes. Are, are you actually uh, involved in actually people coming to you? Or are you doing counseling? Or what, what focus is your ministry focusing on there? What we do is do referrals. Okay. So they come into me. We ask a litany of questions okay trying to find out what is going on with this person all right now let me just hold just for a second Mm -hmm. why would they be coming to you who brought them first of all i work um on a day-to-day basis at the good samaritan network okay my job is to work in um the in the office with uh client services Okay. So I deal a lot with benevolence. So okay. I see people coming in and finding out what their ask is. Okay. And when I say their ask is, what is it that you're looking for? Whether it's clothing, whether it's food, whether it's shelter, whether it's help to get out of a certain situation. They're aware of if if they come to me, I might be able to have a resource that can help them um, okay. out of whatever okay. they're looking for. Right. So when they come in based on the questions that I'm asking and the information that they're providing, um, you can either know something is going on or there's a deeper problem. And so that's where I get my information from. Okay. And if it's necessary, we'll go further and do what we need to do, whether we need to um, help them get out of a situation. I contact usually um, certain people and we can get them referred to a place. Sometimes we get them um, referred. We'll have to send them out of the state. To get wow. assistance wow. Um, based on what's going on, whether it's a domestic violence situation. Some of wow. those are so brutal. And as I said, a lot of times the domestic violence and human trafficking, they actually run almost parallel together right. in a lot of cases. But uh, you're actually putting yourself in harm's way, aren't you? <laughs> well... I think I was born to do this. Okay. So when you do that, you do it with an understanding and knowing that you have some resources and that you're able to give the information and provide a portal 
Okay. That people can but, get but out. But somebody comes to you. Yes. And they're under somebody's control. Yes. And you're taking them out of that control. Let me just be really clear with you. Okay. Sometimes it takes more than one time. Okay. Um, so you've, minute, you've observed over a process of them coming back to you. Yes. And okay. sometimes I'll tell them, I need you to come back and see me on such and such a day. Right. Okay. Because they're not ready to come right. out. Well, see, as a pastor, mm-hmm. I've been on the other side of this mm-hmm. to where uh, a young lady would start to come to our church and then would come to me or one of my associates and say, hey, I'm being abused. Mm-hmm. And we've helped them. And boy, <laughs> we, we've caught it. Because yes. all of a sudden you've got an angry person who's very upset with you and they're wanting to know where this person is. Yes. And they're calling you, I'm talking about you, me, mm-hmm. or one of my associates, mm-hmm. threatening us, threatening our families. Yes. So I know what this looks like. Mm-hmm. And so this is this is where you are. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, the folks listening may not be familiar with the Good Samaritan, Good Samaritan Network. Yes. Which is a, a Glenn and Beth Burns. Mm-hmm. Who uh, the where you work yes. is a thrift store mm-hmm. uh, that's run by Good Samaritan Network. Yes. Okay. And out of that, they of course I, I've had uh, Glenn and Beth on the radio show many many times. I'm somewhat familiar with their ministry. And then uh, uh, Glenn told me one because they have Chelsea's house. Yes. And he told me he says if all we had to do was just fund Chelsea's house, he said we'd be fine. But he's he's helping fund all different types of ministries. It's yes. part of the network. Mm-hmm. Okay. But you've mentioned uh, clients that come to you for needs. Yes. So this is kind of this is what the the thrift store is mm-hmm. doing. It. They're, yes. They're out of the proceeds, people are coming in buying items that have been donated. Yes. These funds are put aside to help the community to the extent that you can. Yes. And I understand that because mm-hmm. there's only, only so many dollars. <laughs> Yes, and uh, I've also had uh, Echo mm-hmm. on the show. I mean, I, I've known of Echo from the very beginning. Tony Tran, mm-hmm. she came to me as one of the ministers in town to talk about the establishment of this ministry, and I know how strained that ministry is. Yes, I've had uh, uh, the folks from the Good Samaritan or uh, Salvation Army on the show. Yes, <laughs> so I, I'm very familiar with what you all are dealing with. All of those are part part right. of our partners, and yes. and you. Uh, or say, okay, we don't have the resources here, but perhaps, and you point them over there. Yes. And maybe this particular ministry, they kind of deal more in this problem than maybe you would, and you know all of that. Yes. So so as a result of that, your your ministry's out there. Yes. You're, you're part of the grapevine. Mm-hmm. And so they say, okay, go over there to Good Samaritan Network. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times they're coming with uh Sometimes they come with demands, don't they? Yes. <laughs> Big time. Yes. yes. And you have to kind of show them the reality of things. Mm-hmm. This is what we can do. Yes. This is what we cannot do. There, okay. there are times when people come with an ask, and they come every month like clockwork. Uh-huh. And so you find that the problem is not that they don't have any money. It's sometimes budgeting. Right. And learning how to um, help a person, you know, um, figure out their budget and where right. money should be going and where it should not. And, and you be also going. know that many of them are abusing absolutely the funds that they get, abusing because, the system because they're addicted to so drugs or alcohol or whatever else that the devil or has, mental the, health issues, right, right. And so you you're knowing all of that, and of course you you you're you've been at this long enough now. Yes. You know how to manipulate your way. Th- that's the wrong word. How to traffic your way through it. You mm-hmm. you you know what to do, what not to do, who you can help, who you can't help. Mm-hmm. And in the midst of all of this, you begin to see a pattern that you recognize. Yes. And you're saying, this person is under somebody's control, mm-hmm. and they're being abused and used. Mm-hmm. Okay. At that point, this is where you step in. Yes. So what do you do? Um, it depends on what it is. Uh-huh. Sometimes they're talking in theory. They're saying we and our family. If a person is doing that consistently, they're not ready to come out. Uh, really? Because so, they still have ownership and they feel like they're still a part of uh-huh. this particular family. Wow. So you have to at least wait until they are ready to say, um, you ask them, do you want to come out? What do you want to do about this situation? What would make you happy if uh-huh. you could get out of this or if you could do this or that? Right. And normally they will say, 
um, I'm not quite sure sometimes. Uh Um, They're afraid. Right. Something new. Um, Sometimes they've been in human trafficking so long or been beat so long that this is the way they think that they're supposed to be living. Wow. They don't understand. Wow. Wow. We had a a girl to come into the office. Yes. She came in the office. She had been in human trafficking since she was 11 years old. She'd been trafficked. She thought that this was the way of her her way of life. I bet she would. And so when she got, you would think, okay, so now she's turned 18. She's ready to get out of what they call, and when you're in human trafficking, it's called being in the life. That's wow. the terminology. So you would think when she turned 18, she wanted to get out of the life. When she turned 18, she continued the saga. She, she oh kept my. going. And so um, she still had what we call a pimp or the trafficker or the sugar daddy or whatever you're calling right, them right, these right. days. And so he was still manipulating her. Um, he was still telling her, nobody loves you but me. Nobody will ever take care of you. And now she's 18 and she's kind of worn out. And so now it's he can treat her um, very badly. Wow. The abuse escalates. Wow. And so now she's doing things that she ordinarily would not have wow. done. Wow. Um, drugs, more so alcohol, more so. Um, and even if she gets out, she still always refers back to him. Is that right? Wow. Yeah. And then... We go back to the situation. I think it was your, your aunt yes. that was murdered. Yes. And she, this, this, this was her life. This was her life. Now, were you aware of it or was your family aware of it? We were aware. I was much, 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 much younger. Uh-huh. I was a little girl. I would okay. see her when my mom would get her and have her to come and stay with us for a while. After a while, she would say, I've got to go back. Uh-huh. If I don't go back, he's going to kill mother. Uh-huh. He's going to kill my so father. So even as a child, you're hearing this. Yes. And you're going, something's not right here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because what is it? I mean, you, I know that had an effect. Yes. This brought you into this. But, but what is it that happened in your life that where you realize that you could do something here? I think when um, I just kind of, it kept bugging me. Uh-huh. All after she passed away, I was in college and I kept trying to figure out what could we have done because this was the best. She was the funniest aunt in the entire world. All of the cousins absolutely we loved her. Uh And I kept trying to figure out, even when I was younger, what could I have done? What could, could we have done differently? And a lot of times it's not so much trying to just pull her out. We lose hope. Uh-huh. When we see a, peop- a person right, keeps right. going over and over and over, they're never going to come out. And so then we start avoiding them because it's always okay. their ask. They right. keep coming back. They come back with black eyes. They come back with bloody noses. They come back with broken arms and limping. And so they get okay for a little while and they come back. You see the tears. You see how distraught they are. And you absolutely feel helpless right. in the situation. And you feel like nothing you say or do and sometimes they just need somebody to listen uh-huh. to them and, and after, not judge them after a while you you get to that well this is your life this is the way you want to live to go go do it and it's not right the way right. we think it is we're right. on the outside looking in right if a person in a domestic violence situation or a human trafficking situation stays alive wow it's a miserable life in it it's miserable but guess what you have to applaud them you have to tell them how good of a job that they've done because they simply survived. Uh-huh. You don't know what it takes for them to get up the next day. Wow. Or to show their faces. And their self-esteem is just gone. It's just, almost non-existent. Yeah. So in that vein, then you have to turn around and try to do some um, building, character building. Right, right. Wow. Um, Give them wow. incentives to believe in themselves again. Wow. This is the Gospel on the Radio talk show. Wendy Strickland is the lady you've been listening to here, executive director and founder of Angel Wings Family Crisis Intervention Center, Incorporated. She's doing a, a job that, uh, well, it certainly needs to be done, but it's, it's a tough one. And uh, we're going to get back to her and, and hear some more of her story and about her ministry. But I want to remind you of the uh, 5K and One Mile Victory Run. It's a part of the Angel Wings organization. It's going to be January the 25th at Tom Brown Park, 
Registration at 7. The race begins from 8, goes to 1. And then after the race, there's a time of family fun, uh, games, um, let's see here, vendors and unique ideas, merchandise and speakers about human trafficking and uh, domestic violence. So all that taking place out at Tom Brown Park. Now, here's some information I didn't give you earlier. To contact them at www.gsn, which stands for Good Samaritan Network, at residence, R-E-S, dot org. And it concerns the 5K run with Angel Wings. So this is a, just a way of giving you the information. And um, and I don't have any uh, information as far as price or fees or anything like that. You can contact them at that uh, email, www.gsn uh, at residence.org. Org, and uh, I guess you'd make an attention to uh, uh, Wendy Strickland, and she'll get you all the information. Welcome this morning. I hope that you are going to church. I pastor Freedom Road Christian Ministry, seven twenty Capital Circle Northeast. We love having visitors. We start eleven oh five on Sunday mornings. You can check us out on the web. Uh, FRCM.us. We are between Easterwood Drive and Park Avenue. If you're heading toward Park Avenue. Look for us on the right-hand side of the road. We'll have signs out for you. Also, this is show number 902 today that we've been involved in over the years we've been doing this show. And if you like Southern gospel music, and of course I'm a huge fan, join me Saturday night, 7 o'clock on 94.1 on your radio dial for a full hour of Southern gospel music with a Saturday night gospel sing with me, Pastor Jack King. Also, you might want to know that uh, these shows are on podcast now this is going to be a uh, let's see give it about a week before it comes out on my podcast but you can find it there all you got to do is go to pastor jack king tallahassee and it'll come up then you can find it and uh, there's a whole bunch of gospel on the radio talk shows on there also the daily broadcast is on the podcast as well you can find it there now let me just mention my good friends robin and jim triple a constant comfort they do heating and air conditioning and they have been helping me do this show since i started back in 2002 Good Brothers, new unit, get the old one repaired, they're the guys to call, 893-9566, AAA, Cost and Comfort. Once again, here's the information concerning the uh, 5K and One Mile Victory Run that's uh, sponsored by Angel Wings. This is an annual fundraiser for them to be able to help them do the work that they do in uh, combating human trafficking and uh, domestic violence. The 5K Victory Run, January 25th at Tom Brown Park. Registration at 7 o'clock. The race starts from 8 and goes to 1. And then after that, a time of family fun there at the uh, Tom Brown Park. So make sure to check this out. www.gsnc at residence.org. And that's Angel Wings. And that's a Z. On the, after the G in wings. So this is all information for you to have, and I would encourage you to get involved because after listening to this interview with Miss Strickland, that really brings to the forefront this issue that we are dealing with, and this is a way that you can be involved and you can help out. And as you know, one of the things that we want to do here on the Gospel on the Radio Talk Show is to give you information about things that will benefit our community and benefit your fellow man. So once again, www.gsnc at residence.org, 5K and one mile victory run January 25th at Tom Brown Park from 8 to 1. We are talking about a subject that is a, I don't know, it just kind of gets my dander up. (laughs) Uh, This thing about human trafficking, and as I mentioned earlier in the show, our former uh, uh, state attorney, uh, Pam Bondi, she really brought this to the the forefront here in our state and how serious this problem is. And Sister Wendy Strickland here today, she's been giving us uh, some real highlights of this problem that we're dealing with. And she 
has dedicated her life now to try to help in uh, whatever way she can. Sister Wendy, I'm sure you could use some help. Would you uh, mind giving some information to the folks as to how to contact you? The number to contact us is 850-800-7003. Okay. And you can reach us via email at Angel Wings. And that's Angel Wings with a Z. A-N-G-E-L-W-I-N-G-Z. F-C-I-C at gmail.com. Okay, and so that's the email. Is there a website as well? Yes. You can go to our w- website at gsncares.org slash angel wings. Okay, now, would donations be made through the Good Samaritan Network or directly to you? Yes, you can make it um, all donations through GSN and in the memo section or in the, on the tab, um, click on Angel Wings, yeah. and it will go directly and to GSN us. is Good Samaritan Network. Yes, okay. Good Samaritan Network. Okay, and so you can, if you want to help with their uh, financial needs, yes, go there. Yes, and, sir. Uh, you can make contributions. I'm sure they've got it all set up. They're not like me. Or you can go to PayPal, I'm sure, and, and make donations online. Yes. Uh, they've been at this for a long, long time. A very long. Uh, those are all things that I say I'm going to do someday, but I haven't got around to it yet. Bless your heart. But I do have plans to. I, my, my children, uh, they, they've been very good to help me learn computer stuff. Because I'm, I'm one of these old people, so coming into the new new age. Okay. But uh, there's a limit to their patience. <laughs> 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 but I, I appreciate them for all they've done to help me do what I do. But um, talking about this whole thing about human trafficking, and you said as, as young as what, nine months. It's just... Oh, Lord Jesus, help us. My yes. goodness. But this just shows you the the ugliness of humanity when yes. humanity is uh, turned loose to follow its own way. Their evil and, uh, imagination. Right. Yes. And then there's people like you who you you say, i got to do something here. And so you started Angel Wings. Yes. And uh, you talked about your part of your work is you're, you're informing. But you have these clients who come through where you work at the thrift store. Yes. And you're, you're the person involved in client services. In other words, if somebody comes in and they, they're requesting assistance, they go through you. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you've learned over the years. Yes. There's, there's these signals that, that comes to you. Mm-hmm. And then you begin to be suspicious that this person is being trafficked. And you've already told us that you have networks of people, you know, different agencies to contact. Yes. And and say, okay, this person is this. But how does that work when, okay, first of all, you have to know where they live. And, of course, that's assuming that they're staying here in Tallahassee. You've already told us that we're we're a path on a journey. Yes. Okay. So that person has come to you for the first time. You've never seen them before. Mm Mm-hmm. But your your radar says, "Hey, mm-hmm. we got something going on here. What can you do?" I mean, because they're they're, they're moving on. When you um, one of the asks that usually throws up a flag is when they say, um, "We came to get clothing." Okay. And they come to get clothing. Possibly, I might ask, "What what are you needing clothing for, and why can't you purchase it?" Uh-huh. Well, we don't have the money to purchase it, or I don't have the money. And when they go and look for clothing that looks like um, the shorts are about as short as handkerchiefs and tops are very revealing, uh-huh. very risque. Uh-huh. And they go out front and I said, bring bring your things back to me. Let me see what you have. Uh-huh. And when you look at what they're wearing or what they're finding, people don't just normally, ordinarily go and find the shortest, the tightest the smallest things to put on. Uh-huh. Um, and normally they keep looking out the door because they think that somebody's out there waiting for them. Oh my goodness. That's one thing. Then sometimes a male will come into the thrift and I don't care what. I've never seen a father know the size of his child's clothing, including her intimate clothing. Uh-huh. You know, um, uh, as, a, as a father, I can testify to that. <laughs> yeah. right. Now, my wife would. Yes. yes. Your right. wife might right. know, right. but the father should no. not know. No. Um, and then the ask becomes, he needs uh, sanitary products for 
this young girl. Uh-huh. Um, we've had them come from hotels on on in in our city, asking for certain things, and then as we go further after you investigate, my thing is I need to see her. She has to come in the store. Uh-huh. She has to come in and do that. Ask how old is she? Well, she's fourteen. Why can't she come in? Uh-huh. If she's that young and you are in the hotel, we're right here. Right. We're in the same right. city. Okay. So I have to lay eyes on her uh-huh. and I have to ask questions. Okay. But they're, but but you know they're moving on. Yes. I'm very well aware so of that. What, I mean, can, if you informed authorities, could they do anything? It depends. Uh-huh. It depends. And sometimes the girl won't, won't say anything. Right. She's already been groomed. Right. Say I'm your father. Uh-huh. Say I'm your uncle. Um, they're already been groomed to um, say, you know, I came here. My mom is dead. Um, my mom's really sick. I'm here going to school with him and his wife. There is no wife. Um, they have a lot of different stories. Right, so right. The, the, it, it doesn't surprise me the stories uh-huh. and their excuses oh yeah and, and again as a pastor mm-hmm. and uh, I pastored uh, here on 8th Avenue for 35 years and we're not far from the interstate okay, yes <laughs> and uh, uh, there's not too many stories I have not heard mm-hmm. and, and they, they sound vaguely familiar yes, yes. and I it's what's, what's funny not funny funny is not the right word interesting to me now mm-hmm. is that what you're describing to me I saw it Yes. But I didn't know what it was. It's human See? trafficking. Yeah. Another um, experience we had at the thrift, and that's what I call the thrift store, the thrift, um, or, or the shop. Um, there were, you know how kids come and they're selling magazines? Right. We had a young man to come, and it was clear that he had some type of deficiency. Um, and so he kept coming. Now, he came last year. And he was selling the Uh books. He was then asked, um, who was he selling them for? And was he getting money to do this selling? And he said, yes. So the question then became, what will happen? How much money do you have to make? And he gave a figure. Then the question became, what happens if you don't make that amount? Right. He said, we don't eat. Uh So he is under somebody's control. Yes. Wow. And then you say they, they came one year and they came another year. Yes. So they're on some type of a route here. And they originate from Jacksonville. Uh-huh. And so once the question started being asked, he immediately got picked up. Uh-huh. Um, wow. Yeah. So that kind of scares them. Um, when he was asked how many people were in the hotel room, there were several. And there were boys and girls in this wow. hotel room. Okay. So let's say somebody's out there listening today and they've heard this and they're they're becoming aware of something that, that they weren't aware of. Mm-hmm. And they, they say, oh, I know, I, I know a situation like that. What should they do? I'm going to say call the police department okay. and ask for... Um, the duty officer and find out the person that's over sex crimes uh-huh. with the Tallahassee Police Department. But I think the better uh, solution is call us and let's try to figure it out. Because uh-huh. sometimes what you think is human trafficking might be a simple thing. Uh-huh. But I'm going to be honest with you. Most of the time, when you think it's human, you get that gut feeling something's wrong. Uh-huh. It does not look right. It's not fitting. Right. But but they should the not police. try to intervene themselves. No, don't. No. no. You could get can, hurt. It could be very dangerous. And it can go south really quick. Right, right. When you say call you or call the Good Samaritan Network. Yes. Okay. But what if it's weekend? <laughs> I answer my phone all the okay. time. I mean, uh, you're, you're taking a lot on yourself here if you're offered that service because you, you may get it more than you're looking for. See, what, what it, when you call my number, uh-huh. you can ask me the questions and we can go from there. Right. So I can help lead you in the right direction. If we need to call the police and get them involved, that's one thing. If you're needing training and, and, and you want to have a network of people to understand, because okay. Mr. Burns is very clear, learn how to teach the police, the people to police. And that way, when something comes up, 
when the red flags come up, they know, okay, I need to call the police for real. This uh-huh. is this is not just something that I'm seeing. Right. Okay. Now, are you all offering this type of training? Yes. Okay. How often does that happen? I come and give lectures. I've been to Florida a and I've been to different cities here. Okay. We've gone to Georgia. We've given trainings on what um, human trafficking looks like. We give all of the information you need to really be able to spot it. Okay. Because we have not only do we um, go to classes, but we also have boots on the ground. Okay. We're actually talking to people that have actually been trafficked. Reading a book is one thing. Right. But actually being able to have your boots on the ground, right. be a grassroots organization, and you find out what's really happening. Like most of the time, most people don't know. It doesn't matter how old the baby is. If a person's mind is that dark, they will seek that child out. Wow. wow. There used wow. to be a page called Backpage. Say it again. Backpage. Backpage. And so... um the page would look like this. You go in and type in what you're looking for. New to town. Young. Um, My goodness. And they would put that information in. And they would put in the city. Uh-huh. They would hit enter. And a list of people would start coming up. Really? It would show what was needed. Where they were... Um, looking for and it would give the information and people would inbox them oh my goodness now, now, now these are people who would be involved in the abuse mm-hmm. and there are people who actually put this on the internet as far as information and there's nothing authorities can do about this they have since taken down back page okay thank god but there's probably another to replace it but there's another to replace it wow um there are girls that are being made to go out and put their photos Modeling, seeing that they're models and they're looking for someone to sponsor them and they reach out and find out that these girls that look on on online like they're 30 or like they're 25. They're actually 12, 13. They've been made up. They're wearing wigs, um, all kind of stuff. And the reason a lot of times their pictures are out there is because the person that's trafficking them. Or manipulating them or coercing them to go out and do this, they have something they're holding over their heads. Case in point, if a girl has a child or a baby, uh-huh. they will hold the life of that child over that girl's head or over this young man's head. Oh my. We will kill them. We will kill your family. And when a child hears that, or we will kill your siblings, they are petrified. Right. This is another uh, benefit to this, if you will. They will kill a cat in front of them or kill a favorite pet. Oh, my. When they bring them into care, they give them certain things. This is what makes them human. Let me give you a puppy. Do you like puppies? Yes. You take care of it. So after a certain amount of time, you you grow this bond with whatever it is. It can be a rabbit. It can be a gerbil. They take it out and they kill it in front of them and say the same thing will happen to you if you do not do what I ask you to do. And and this is happening right here in Tallahassee, the United States of America. Uh, And it's it's virtually right in front of a lot of us. We're just not seeing it. It's in plain sight. Right. And, And the thing about it is that what you're doing today, not only here on the radio, but Wherever you go to give these lectures and stuff, you're you're opening eyes of people. You've opened mine here now. Now I've had some bit of a, a light in it since Sister Bondi, Miss Bondi, came out and started talking about things. She talked to. I've talked to more people. Mm-hmm. I've read about what you're talking about here. Yes, you're bringing us even more information here today. Mm-hmm. We have a serious crisis in our land. People yes. need to become aware of what's happening all around you. Things that you that you saw, but you didn't realize what it was. It's mm-hmm. like I've telling you about all these years pastoring here in this building. These people coming through. Yes, like I say, I've seen it, but I didn't know. I didn't know. Mm-hmm. Wow, this is this is just really amazing. But this is the world in which we live in. The the, the Bible even tells us that in those last days, perilous, 
perilous times will come. And if this is not perilous times, I don't know what perilous times are. That's the truth. But it's what we're dealing with in this way. Okay. Information. Give the people uh, any, any information you want to give them as far as contact or what, what they can do. It's yours. It's yours. Give them. You can contact me um, again with the number 850-800-7003. Okay. Um, I'm at the thrift store Monday through Friday until most days until four o'clock. Okay. If you need a call consult and you need to talk and you feel like you're in a place that you're ready to get out and you're afraid and don't know what to do, call me. I will make myself available. Okay. But this is the thing. I will not come to you. You will have to come to me. Okay. And this where you are is in the uh it used to be called the Wakama. Yes. Now, old time Tallahassee folks, we know what Wakama <laughs> was. Now, most people may not. Shara Road. 2810 Shara Road, Suite 30. Okay. We're at the thrift store. And you'll know you're at the thrift store because you'll see all the stuff on the front porch for sale. <laughs> and uh, Yes. Uh, Movies 8. Is it still there? Yeah. Okay. Well, no. It's no. not there anymore. But Chuck E. Cheese is still Chuck there. E. Cheese. And yeah. we're right next door to Christian Heritage Church. Right. Okay. And that's where the thrift store is. And that's where you'll, you'll come. You'll, you'll find the, this ministry, Angel Wings, yes. there. Sister Strickland. She's there. Her God's given her a passion about this thing. She wants to do what she can to help. Uh, we have a monumental problem yes. on our hands. Mm-hmm. Everybody has to become aware yes. because it may be your neighbor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and heaven forbid, it could be one of your loved ones. Yes, And that's the thing that breaks all of our hearts. Because what happens and what you've already revealed to us is that these people are going to separate them from you. Yes. And they're going to make you the enemy. When your children get angry right. with you and they run away from home, 24 to 48 hours after they leave walking, they are approached by a trafficker wow. or someone to put them in human trafficking. They are approached. They now have a new family uh-huh. and an extended family. So here is the issue. We need to parents need to parent. Right. We need to know where our children right. are. And when we get angry with them, we don't need to tell them to get out. Right. And and you need to be aware of who they are contacting on the Internet because a lot of the people, when they leave that home, they know already where to go. That's a whole different there you ball go. game. There you go. And unfortunately, we don't have time <laughs> to explore that. But that is a, another, wow, a dark world that yes. we have out there. we got to protect our children. Yes. Yes, there it is. My goodness, this has been uh, quite the eye-opening interview today. But I appreciate you coming. And uh, we always close this broadcast out with prayer. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that we, we've been enlightened today. This is heavy stuff. And Lord, we ask for your help, that God, that you would intervene. Lord, that you would help Wendy and, and others who are involved in trying to, to make a difference. God, I pray you would help them. Give them a, a wonderful anointing to do what they do. And Father God, I pray that people would, would find their way to her door. Jesus. And Lord God, we pray for our churches and our pastors, so yes. people who are dealing with these situations. Father, we, we hold them up. Father, we pray over our city. Yes, God. And Father God, we pray for our country. Mm-hmm. Oh, Lord God, we need help so desperately. Thank and you, Father Jesus. God, we pray for your kingdom that the light of Jesus would go forth across the world. And we give you the glory. We give you all the praise. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Sister Wendy, thank Amen. you so much for coming and being on the Gospel on the Radio talk show. It was great being here. Amen. Thank you. Until next Sunday morning. May the Lord bless you.